everybody. Coming at you from sunny California. Just kidding, I'm in my office again. This week, we're looking at a variety of post-war movements that came after abstract expressionism, including neo-dada, pop art, and fluxus. At the beginning of the semester, we talked about how there's a modern and a contemporary era, and up to this point, we've only been looking at modern art. Now we move into the contemporary era, from 1950 to present day. Art of the immediate post-war era was heavily influenced by abstract expressionism, Jackson Pollock and others working on a large scale with totally abstract forms. Art becomes not just the illusion of a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional canvas. It's not just an abstraction of the world we see around us. It's now an arena in which to act. In other words, art moves off the wall and into our actual space. It becomes about the act of creating, the process, rather than about the finished product. The contemporary era is characterized by a wave of new art forms and approaches to art making, such as installation art and performance art. Again, the process and the idea are more important than a finished product or simply making an aesthetically pleasing object. This stems in large part from the legacy of Marcel Duchamp and the Dada artists that we studied a few weeks ago. The work of Dada artists like Duchamp inspired a wave of neo-Dada artists working in the 50s. The prefix neo always refers to something that is new. So it's like a revival of the Dada attitude in a new era. <laughs> Take a moment to look at these two examples on the screen. What about them seems inspired by Dada? The artists Jasper Johns and Robert Rauschenberg combined everyday objects and images. Johns depicted things the mind already knows, such as American flags, targets, numerals, and even beer cans. Rauschenberg also blurred the boundaries between painting and sculpture with his work, which he called combines, since they combined different materials like taxidermied animals, painting, and found objects. Like Duchamp, these works are open to different interpretations. Also like Duchamp, these works are irreverent and humorous, even silly. They combine some elements of abstract expressionism, like the drips and splashes of paint, but unlike the abstract expressionists, these artists don't take themselves so seriously. Canyon and Monogram by Rauschenberg, here on the screen, are both examples of combines. They combine bits of high art materials like oil paint, pencil, photography, with low art found objects like buttons, bits of mirror, cardboard, a pillow, and other materials, even taxidermied animals. Like Duchamp, Rauschenberg takes found objects, makes a few adjustments, and then presents them in an art context. So in a way, these are also kind of like ready-made objects or assisted ready-made objects like Duchamp was making. Like the neo-data artists, pop artists incorporated found objects like collage for magazines and newspapers. Pop art in general is art that combines elements from consumer culture, mass media, and pop culture. Unlike neo-data artists, pop artists did not incorporate the messy brushstrokes or drips. Instead, they emulate the clean look of mass-produced imagery. Here we're looking at one of the first pop art pieces by Richard Hamilton, a British artist and it's called Just What Is It That Makes Today's Homes So Different, So Appealing. What do you notice here? You may have noticed that the artist has taken a lot of inspiration from Yes! magazines and newspapers, uh, but also comic books and advertising. He's combined all of these different references to pop culture, mass culture, um, advertising, and art as well. You may have seen that painting in the background is supposed to be a reference to Jackson Pollock. And he's combined all of these elements into a work that emulates what you might see um, when you're flipping through a magazine or a newspaper. It's this emphasis on consumer culture and it's this combination of high and low elements. Andy Warhol was unquestionably the most famous artist of the American pop art movement. He began as a commercial artist working for a department store. 
This seems to have influenced the direction his art took in years to come. He took his subject matter from pop culture, celebrities like Marilyn Monroe, and from consumer culture, like Campbell Soup Cans that he made famous. He also made films of everyday activities and consumer culture, like one where he just sits and eats a meal from Burger King in real time. Instead of painting his subjects onto the canvas, he used the method of screen printing like you see here. Screen printing is a process that's associated with mass media rather than traditional art making, and it also makes the process more mechanical. Once the screen is created with the image of Marilyn's face, anyone could run the paint through the screen and onto the canvas. Warhol ran his art studio as a factory, which is what he called it, the factory. This underscores the connections to mass media and commercial processes as well. Klaus Oldenburg is known for his gigantic sculptures of everyday items, like a gigantic burger made out of canvas sewn together and filled with foam rubber and cardboard boxes. He's also known for his spoon bridge and cherry in Minneapolis at the Walker Art Center. He also made the 24 foot high sculpture He also made the 24 foot high sculpture on the right, lipstick ascending on caterpillar tracks from 1969. He did it in collaboration with architecture students at Yale, his alma mater. Here we have the juxtaposition between the tank-like imagery and the giant lipstick tube, which implied that the US was obsessed with beauty and consumption and that both were fueling and distracting us from the ongoing violence in Vietnam. He playfully critiqued the hyper-masculine rhetoric of the military and the blatant consumerism of the United States. Oldenburg was also known for his installation art. Installation art is art that creates an environment in a room or a gallery. It takes from abstract expressionism the interest in the spatial aspect moving art beyond the confines of a painting hung on the wall or a sculpture on a pedestal and instead making it into a whole environment. Klaus Oldenburg's store is an example of a pop art installation. In the winter of 1961, Oldenburg opened a storefront on the Lower East Side of Manhattan and sold his work there. Among the unusual and eclectic things on sale were sculptures of undergarments and slices of blueberry pie, among other pastries. Everything, however, was made out of plaster. How do you think this work reflects Oldenburg's statement that we read for this week, in which he writes that he is for an art that is political, erotical, mystical, that does something other than sit on its ass in a museum? He said, I am for an art that is comic, if necessary, or violent, or whatever is necessary. <laughs> 